Let's now officially kick off Series 2. What you're listening to is a sample from a live Spasmatics show, the ultimate 80s tribute band, and that's what today's show is, all about 80s music. Here on the show, we have Bjorn, the sweat band rocking and short shorts wearing greatest guitarist from the ultimate new wave 80s cover band, the Spasmatics. Welcome, Bjorn. Wow, nice intro. Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. If you would, go ahead and introduce yourself formally for anyone who hasn't uh, heard or had the great fortune to see the Spasmatics show in person. Please enlighten them. Well, I'm Bjorn from the Spasmatics. I play guitar in the band, and we have a lot of fun. We do mostly rock and roll and new wave from the 1980s and beyond. Sometimes we delve into the 70s and the 90s, and we're branching out a little bit, but we have a lot of fun. The show is all about smiles for miles, and we're fun for kids from 2 to 82. All right. Yeah, that's great. We have a pretty clean show, so we can be funny and humorous, but we can still play for little kids and you know, and adults without offending people. Yeah. We're on the edge, but we're, we're, we're pretty clean. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I would uh, I would echo that definitely. I've been to a handful of your shows and yeah, they're always a good time and fun and it's the 80s music. I mean, enough said, right? Yep. Oh yeah, a great time from new wave to hair bands. There's all kinds of crazy hairdos from Flock of Seagulls to the buzz cuts to big giant rock and roll hair. <laughs> 80s was all about hairdos. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Lots of hairspray sold in that decade. Awesome, man. That's great. So let's uh, let's start with the name. So you are uh, Bjorn, and uh, I guess you're a big tennis fan? Oh, you know it. Actually, table tennis is my thing. Oh, okay. You have your own paddle, I assume? Oh, you know it. Uh, coming out my own signature line someday. I'm still working on my endorsements. <laughs> endorsements are important for sure. And the other band members, you've got uh, Jimmy, Ralphie, and Zeke. Talk about them. Yeah, well, Zeke is our lead singer, and he comes from kind of a theatrical background. So he's done like Broadway style things and theater kind of of stuff. So it really adds a lot for the band because he brings a a different kind of a character, you know, to the to the band. And uh, and the way he runs the show is really fun. And he does also his vocals abilities are great because of all that kind of Broadway style training he had. So he's a really well trained vocalist. You know, people who've seen him know he's got quite a range. He hits notes that are Beyond what the human ear could hear. <laughs> it is unreal. Yeah, you guys have such a range of songs. that, Yeah, it's amazing that he covers all of them so well. And then we have Jimmy on bass, who's like the, the Ed McMahon to uh, Zeke's Johnny Carson. They really bounce the humor off each other, and they have, it's a lot of fun when they, they their banter together on stage is great. So um, he holds down the fort, you know, with the bass lines and uh, holds down the comedy to Zeke. You know, they, they have a fun little rapport together. And then we got Ralphie on the drums. And he's a great drummer, and he's a lot of fun, too. And he's also got a lot of touring experience in his past. So we, we've all been around, and, and before we met and joined this band together, we have all done a lot of different things, you know? So it's nice to play with real pros, you know? Yeah, it is good, because I think if, uh, if people were to delve into the 80s, I mean, there's a lot going on there. I mean, you've got Bon Jovi in there. You've got U2. You've got, uh, of course, the synthesizer was uh, hot and heavy. Yep then but uh but yeah you definitely need people that have a lot of musical acumen to play the set that you guys do yeah there was a lot of virtuosity going on in the 80s with guys like eddie van halen coming out and then you know steve Vai, joe satriani and all the musician guitar player guys and then, so the big hair bands they had a lot of uh just really good musicians you know like the drummers and stuff then again even later on with the, the younger punk bands they're all about these amazing drum playing too you know so yeah, it's, there's some fun stuff in the 80s. Yeah, it's great. Let's kind of delve a little bit deeper into what is it about the 80s music? I mean, here we are a, a few years removed, but yet it uh, seems like you could play it on the radio today and people would electrify to it. Yeah, there was definitely a sound because the 70s had, there's this classic rock sound of the 70s where it's just really raw bass, drums, vocals, whatever, and keyboards. In the 80s, a lot of the more modern recording techniques and synthesizers were really developing and even like digital recording and stuff. So, and even though a lot of people were against it, electronic drums were coming out and it kind of gave a certain kind of sound that was a little bit more futuristic 
And even the new wave bands were really, you know, they were really embracing that. The rock bands weren't as much embracing that sound. The new, the new wave bands were really doing that digital keyboards, digital drums, oh, yeah. and all that stuff. And then, but even the rock bands were using it, but they were kind of like not using it to the extent of the of the new wave bands. And then with all the new recording techniques, you know, the multi-tracking, it enabled a whole different range of sound. Like the production got way you know, high level of production value. And that was a, a thing that really happened through all the music genres of the eighties, you know? So uh, I think that was where a big sound, cause you hear the sixties and the seventies and then the eighties just ha- sounds bright and shiny, you know, colorful. Oh, it's almost yeah. like black and white TV going to color. That's to me <laughs> like the seventies going to the eighties as far as the sound of music, you know, and I love sixties and seventies rock. But the 80s had more of that. And also MTV came out. So suddenly appearance was a different thing. Sure. And people were using all the, the neon colors came out. So it really was a colorful time period for the sound and the look. Everyone's getting the crazy hairdos, shiny colored clothes, you know, shocking pink and yellow. And, and all these colors were coming. Even Kiss went to those colored coded outfits where each guy had his own color, you know, and that when they didn't have the makeup. Right. So um, I think the 80s definitely had it just a huge jump like a evolution in far as recording and in looks and musical instrumentation so that was probably one of the things and then you know there's a lot of people that didn't love the, the new wave thing you know there's a rock back those days it was like there was a rock camp and a new wave camp now everyone's kind of embraced both sides you know because it's really not that different it just seemed like different it was all about the haircuts <laughs> back in those days <laughs> it was yeah for sure yeah, I mean, you have Bon Jovi with Little Runaway, you know, I mean, everybody kind of started somehow putting their, like you said, rock flavor on it, even with the synthesizers. And there was something recently that uh, Ted Templeton, I guess, the great Van Halen producer that just could not stand Jump, but it's such an electrifying song and so infectious. But I guess at the time, yeah, he, he wasn't too big on it. But I, I think Eddie definitely embraced even at that point, the, you know, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, all the synthesizer stuff, yeah. Even add the guitar here. Yeah, definitely. Did that give you pause when we uh, unfortunately lost him? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was so young and it was, you know, I'd heard about health issues. You know, there was always rumors of him fighting cancer, but no one really knew. So when it, when it, when he died, it was kind of like really shocking. But even David Lee Roth was in an interview saying, I don't know how it's doing. They were really, you know, very quiet about it. And yeah. It was very shocking and surprising when that happened. So super sad and he was definitely one of the greatest guitar players that's ever lived as far as rock guitar player and innovation what he did for the styles of music and even guitar the way he transformed you know putting the humbucker into the strat with the tremolo i mean he he wasn't the first guy to do it but when he did it everybody was like wow that's that's the thing it really changed guitar for for the whole eight another thing about the 80s you know that was yeah yeah definitely yeah, I still remember when I yeah, first heard Eruption. I mean, just, you know, just you know, just the thickness of it and just, oh my gosh. So yeah, good stuff. Yeah, it sounded like, it sounded like something from another planet. The sound was like, you know, we never heard a guitar. Even his tone was super, you know, just different. Even though it was just a Marshall cranked, the way it sounded was so futuristic. And it was just the way he played it, you know. It just sounded like it was a guy from an outer space coming to Earth going, okay, here's how we're doing it up, and, you know. We're a million years ahead of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, I think we're all still trying to catch up too. So uh, so what's uh, what's the favorite 80s song that you like to listen to and then your favorite 80s song to play? Wow, there's not one I could, I would, I could only name a hundred. Um, the 80s <laughs> song that I like to listen to, um, I just, there's, there's a, just a catalog. I mean, of course, the rock stuff, the Van Halen, I love all that stuff and that most of that came up through the 80s. And then um, even when Deep Purple got back together with that Machine Head lineup and did the Perfect Strangers album, I love that too. And then, um, I mean, there's White Snake. There's these are a lot of rock bands I'm naming, but uh, yeah. yeah, that's as far as the '80s could mean. Now, just it's, it's every year you could probably name ten great songs from each year throughout the decade. You know, so I'd never be able to go, what's one song? Yeah. But what we like, uh, when we're on stage playing. They're all fun to play. Um, we, I, you know what? One of those I really have a lot of fun with because it's, it's the Prince song, Let's Go Crazy. Oh, nice. It's a fun song. It's got really cool lyrics and everything. And then, and then it's got great guitar stuff. You know, the, so I love, you know, the guitar solos from the kind of Prince was a great guitar player too. And so I love to play that song because it's fun. Then songs we do that have like uh, fun. We have a lot of choreography. 
And so some of the moves we do are, are just fun to do. <laughs> I think that makes that what our show is so fun because we, we, we have costumes, we have choreography, we have like comedy. And uh, it's almost like when we learn a new song, I don't feel like it's incomplete till we cut, come up with a move that goes along with it, you know, that we can do because that's what makes it a show, you know, having, having like a steps and stuff that we do together. And it's fun coming up with them. Sometimes we do stuff that's purposely corny and other times we just wanted to look super badass, you know, so <laughs> just whatever fits the, the song, you know, um, I love when we play a sweet child of mine. Oh, that's a great one too. That riff. He can I do at the end of that song. Yeah. We do a trade off where he starts singing some riffs and then I got to copy it on the guitar. Then he does a harder riff and then I got to copy that one. Then he brings it way up high and then I got to copy that one. That's really fun. It's like the little battle of the singer and the guitar player. Yeah, It is amazing. So that's some fun stuff. Yeah, that's another one of those uh, freshman albums that, yeah, I mean, you could release it today. and I mean, just those licks are just so amazing. Yeah, it's hard to believe they're over 30 years old. I mean, Guns N' Roses' album is 33 years old now. It's Golly. like, what? <laughs> like, it still seems new to me. Or It wasn't that long ago, was it? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I still remember, yeah, that, that guitar riff and that video when he comes off the bus just, you know, still resonates today, so... Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, you talked about the the fun that you guys bring on stage. How come it is that newer bands don't embrace more of that fun stuff right out of the gate? You know, I can tell you by when our singer, our our old original singer, um, Al, was tr- trying to put together a band out here in Austin, Texas, doing like this kind of thing. Some of the more serious type musicians, when they saw the idea of wearing costumes and stuff, they were just not interested. And I think that there's some musicians that take themselves, you know, that's nothing wrong with taking yourself seriously, but sometimes I think that there's a thing where they don't want to be goofy. You know, they feel like I want to be cool. I want people to look, I want to dress cool and look cool and, and have people think of cool. And if I wear that, like a something that's goofy, I guess that a lot of people, they just, they're more interested in looking cool than having fun <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or no. something. I mean, that's, that could be fun. But I mean, once we go spasmatics, we can go as far as we want because we are having fun. I mean, everyone likes comedies. Everyone likes comedy TV shows. So, And when you're out with your friends, you want to have fun. And I would say that we're definitely fun, you know, and we just want to have fun too. We don't mind, you know, looking corny. It's like if, if we can make people smile and laugh, there's nothing better than that. I mean, I love when people are cracking up at some, one of our jokes, you know, if we do something funny on stage or People start laughing. It's it's just great. It's a great feeling that you're bringing happiness to people. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that is guaranteed when you go to a spasmatic show. Which, uh, speaking of the name spasmatics, what's the origin, and uh, what were some of the ones that got kicked around but maybe didn't make it to the uh, the marquee? Yeah, I don't really remember the 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 ones that that failed, but but I know that we definitely are spastic, <laughs> and um, and we also. Um, once in a while, we morph into our alter ego, the Jazzmatics. So uh, that's a fun thing, too. Um, because of Zeke and his Broadway and theater experience, he can really do a really good jazz type of singing. Oh, nice. So once in a while, we will actually play a 80s song in a jazz style. and Zeke will sing it in a jazz style, and, and then we'll bust into the real ver- the rock version afterward. What song would that be? We, we do that with Take On Me, and we've done it with a couple other songs. We've also um, done a reggae version of uh, Heaven, uh, The Cure, the, the, that song Heaven. Oh, yeah, we do, sure. We do a reggae version. So, you know, once in a while, we'll, we'll do another a different style. We'll take a song and we'll stylize it into reggae or jazz or rap or something, and then we'll bring it back and then rock it up again. So nice. it's fun. That, and that's another thing that's nice to have good musicians to play with because to be able to do that, each guy has to be able to get a reggae feel or a jazz feel. Yeah, that improv, yeah. Yeah, we're not really jazz players, but we can get the feel. You know, we can do a simple jazz thing, you know, so that makes it fun too. Essence for sure. Another thing that has to do with people not being, you know, like where I think a lot of rock bands that are trying to be serious, they wouldn't do that because they would, I don't know, I mean, sometimes they'll play a reggae thing, but, you know, it's they, once again, it's a thing about taking yourself seriously or just really being corny and going, I don't care. We're going to just have fun with this. And we don't care how goofy it looks. As long as people have fun with it, that's all that matters to us. Yeah, I think it's important. I think that probably goes even beyond music. I think people worry about how it affects them and not how it affects the audience and, and what they're getting out of it. And you guys definitely put the audience first for sure. So, But yeah, also bring the great musicianship. So it's amazing. Oh, yeah. 
So in regards to venues that you've played, I know you guys have had the great fortune to play celebrity parties. I've seen you on the 50-yard line at the Dallas Stadium. Talk about those. What's touring like with these guys and, and those kind of shows? Well, it's a lot of driving. <laughs> That's one thing for sure. We, <laughs> we are on the road a lot. And um, since we live in Austin, we're three hours from Dallas, three hours from Corpus, a little less than three hours from Houston. So we do those cities a lot. And so we're on the road a lot. And um Playing uh, some of the sports teams' games has been fun. Yeah, we've gotten to do like uh, the Houston Astro. No, the Houston uh, well, Texans. Houston Texans. Yeah, so we we played their halftime show, and oh, they actually nice. put together a whole show where all the cheerleaders wore nerd outfits, nerd <laughs> cheerleader outfits, and they put together a whole routine. And we did a medley of songs, and it was really fun. And we had, we you know got to put together a medley, send it, them the recording of it, and then they choreographed an entire thing to it. And then wow. we went out there and did a rehearsal with them. And um, then we got to play the halftime show, and it was really great. And it looked, it ended up looking really cool. And I think it was on TV. And then uh, we've done the Spurs many times. We've played for them uh, their after parties at their games. Oh, that's and fun. then a few games for the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, so that's that's always fun to do that kind of stuff, you know, in the, in the big arenas and things, you know, for yeah, the big that's crowds. Great. Yeah, I mean, those are, I mean, whew, playing the Texans, that's 80,000 people. That is. <laughs> that ain't bad. Oh uh, yeah, big big crowd. Yeah, that's awesome. We've played out of the country a few times. You know, we've gone to to like uh, Puerto Vallarta and Cabo San Lucas to do. We've played weddings in Mexico and wow. in different like company corporate events. And we played a corporate event out in the Cayman Islands. We've got to Dominican Republic. So we've gotten to play some interesting places. You know, we get some travel in there. But we mainly play in Texas. I mean, could you have ever have imagined, you know, when you're like, yeah, I'm going to play in this band. It's called the Spasmatics. You know, if anybody would have told you, hey, you're going to play, you know, Houston Texans halftime. You're going to play, you know, this wedding in some remote, beautiful island. I mean, that's just the power of music. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, it's all fun. Yeah. We never, yeah. You, you never know where it's going to lead next. That's another thing that's nice about this working as a musician is that it's not routine. You always have new adventures, you know. And once again, I said, you know, it is a lot of traveling and sometimes the traveling can get you know, weary, but in the end, once you're on the stage and playing, then that makes it all worthwhile. That's the fun part. Then the travel back home is, is the part. It's like, you got to take the bad with the good. Yeah, no, but I, I agree. Yeah. The, for those two hours or three hours, yeah, the world makes sense for sure. When you got the guitar in your hand. I drive six hours to play. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. And you got to set up, I guess, too, huh? Break it down. Yep. That's the easy. That's pretty easy for me. I, I have a small amp and a pedal board. It takes me five minutes to set up, you know, oh, hey, but man. the drums, of course, it takes a while. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I kind of asked this, uh, but maybe kind of the other, you know, what is, uh, what's the glue, you know, what's the common chord that seems to resonate with everybody still today? I think it's just the bringing the fun factor. It's all about, as far as our show, you mean, and playing, yeah. even picking songs, you know, we will, we'll, we've tried to, you know, introduce new songs and different things. And, you know, sometimes it'll be a home run and sometimes it won't, you know, so, but we'll give it a try, like, you know, and do our, you know, our thing with it. Because most of the stuff we do, we definitely rock it up a step, you know, like what happens is we'll learn a song and then we'll spazify it. <laughs> and then we'll play it for a couple of years. And then I'll hear it on the radio and I'll go, oh, I, I, that's how it really goes. I, it seems so watered down because <laughs> we, we really rock up the songs, you know, because a lot of the new wave type stuff doesn't really have a rock guitar in the song. A lot of it's more keyboard. But when I put the guitar part onto it, it's like the song plus rock guitar. So yeah, it kind of makes it a little, up, yeah. we kind of rock up. Yeah, we, we have a way of rocking up the songs a little more. And they become, that becomes the way it should, should be. And then so when I hear the original, I'll go, oh, wow, that. That's not, they're, they're missing the rock guitar. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. And how, how do you go about picking the ideal 80s mix? Just different people will, will suggest a song or one of the guys in the band will hear something on the radio that they forgot all about and go, oh, wow, that was a cool song. Let's try it, you know? And so it's just, we, you know, sit down and just think about it, you know? Sometimes I'll even go on online and type in, you know, top uh, 100 songs from 1986 and just kind of look through the list and see if anything is interesting, you know? I put together a guitar medley, a uh, thing called Guitar Mageddon, where I played the the famous riffs from like thirty different guitar songs, like in a row, oh, like wow. it's like five seconds of you know, five seconds of Smoke on the Water, five <laughs> seconds of Cat Scratch Fever, five seconds of Whole Lot of Love, five seconds of Eight Talking About Love, and I just run through all these and I put them all together so they flow like in key with each other, and it's like a like just famous guitar intros, and I so I had to look up like the, what are the all time greatest guitar riffs. And that thing changed too. When I first made it up, it had more 
but I noticed that people would cheer at certain parts. Oh, they cheered for this one. And then at <laughs> certain ones, they didn't get it. Some of them were a little obscure. People didn't know it. So I kind of cut those ones out because I wanted to be where at least a few people know each riff, you know. That's a good way to do it. You know, you've heard uh, Jerry Seinfeld talks about the, the scare of ventriloquism, you know, that they would maybe somehow take over the comedic chops. Uh, did you ever wonder about the grunge scare? Were you concerned that maybe pe- people would forget about the 80s or... Not so much the grunge. To be honest with you, the the, the new wave scared me more because when I started playing guitar, like Van Halen 1 and 2 had just came out. You know, so I was into rock. I was into Led Zeppelin. I was into Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, you know, Foghat, Ted Nugent, all the, the 70s type rock bands. And then I was in high school and then Devo came out and then these other new wave bands and all my friends in high school were all going new wave. <laughs> And I was raw, um, and I go, man. By the time I graduate high school, rock and roll is going to be dead, you know. So I was, I was really worried about that because all of a sudden it was like keyboards were taking over. So, luckily, rock and roll can never die. So that's a good thing. So, it, I, but it was a little bit scary. Then when the when the Nirvana thing came out, it didn't really bother me because I was in, I liked it, and I liked Soundgarden. I was already before Nirvana came out. I was already into Jane's Addiction and Soundgarden. And some of those alternative bands, Faith No More. So by the time Nirvana came out, I was already drifting into alternative rock anyways. Sure. So uh, it, it didn't bother me at all. Yeah. And I liked it. I know. Uh, I've heard uh, The Edge from U2 talk about, you know, every time he feels like, you know, the guitar is losing its luster and people aren't picking it up, then, then somebody, you know, somehow comes along and, and does pick it up and, and brings uh, new light and breath into it. But, uh, but yeah, I hope that people, you know, pick up the guitar more and more. But I know, you know, we've got varying types of music and people can do stuff electronically that they couldn't do before. But, uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, now every, every kid in, in the country can make their own record in their, in their house on their computer now. So yeah. that's, that's kind of neat, you know, that, that, that you don't need a record company to do music. And you can actually, for very little money, you can actually have your own little recording studio and put together your own songs. When I was a kid, you had to actually go to a studio and pay money, like 50 bucks an hour. <laughs> All right. And, and, you know, when you're young, that was like everything you had. I, you know, my band had to save up to record one eight-hour recording session to do three <laughs> songs. Now, get GarageBand on your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, oh, you get your recordings. Now you got to press them either to vinyl or CD or tape or something. You know, now they, uh, they just throw it up on the server and uh, boom, you're out there. There you go, yeah. <laughs> So uh, social media, I guess you guys are all over the social media these days. That's another powerful influence around what people can do. So speaking of, what are the socials if people wanted to get a hold of you? Well, the, the Spasmatics Texas on Facebook okay. and um, Instagram. Definitely. Yeah, we'll check that out. Well, I definitely uh, wish you guys continued success. If we were to roll the show out, what song would you want to be rolled out to? Well, I guess kind of one of our theme songs we play to a lot that is that a take on me is a good uh, ending song for us all we, right that's one of our your tunes excellent well in that case then thank you so much bjorn for the time thank you steve and uh i will definitely be on the looking out for you when are you guys coming back to houston we will be at scout bar excellent that's in your neck of the woods i guess right that You're is yeah houston. real good so yeah it's uh, clear lake or uh, houston but formerly known as clear lake space city yeah, so um, yeah, hit me up and I'll make sure you're on the guest list when I come out to the show. Okay, wonderful. I will definitely take you up on it. Cool. Thanks again, Bjorn. Talk soon. You too. Thank you very much. And there you have it. Our first show for Series 2. We are now off and running. We are super excited for all of our upcoming guests. And again, we thank Bjorn for stopping by. I highly recommend checking out the Spasmatics. Again, that's going to be this Friday at the Scout Bar in Houston on Egret Bay. It's definitely going to be a great time. So be prosperous, be mindful, and we will hear you next week. 